Hello and welcome. You're watching Unplugged TV India. This is Alice Francis. Let's catch some major updates from around the world. Maharashtra CM Eknath Shinde has claimed that many Shiv Sena leaders and workers are in touch with his faction. He said the deputy CM handled the government very well during his tenure as CM. Many people have faith in the government. This comes after Union Minister Rao Saheb Patil Danwe claimed 12 Shiv Sena MPs are in touch with Shinde's faction. Water logging and traffic congestion was witnessed in several parts of the country, including Delhi, Mumbai, Uttar Pradesh and Gujarat amid heavy rainfall. This comes as a red alert has been issued in several areas of Gujarat and Maharashtra, with the Indian Meteorological Department predicting extremely heavy rainfall in the region. Extremely heavy rainfall has also been predicted over Goa. Meanwhile, seven people died as heavy rain led to flood-like situation in many areas in Gujarat on Monday, rivers in spade overflowing dams and flooded streets due to the torrential rains. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday took a dig at the opposition parties and cautioned against politics of shortcuts, saying it can destroy the nation. Speaking at a program in opposition rule Jharkhand, he said, stay away from politics of shortcuts, it won't deliver new airport or new medical college. He said shortcut leads to short circuit. Three senior Congress leaders from Uttarakhand on resigned from the party and joined the Ahmadmi party in Delhi. Uttarakhand Pradesh Congress spokesperson Rajendra Prasad Rathuri, Pradesh Mahila Congress Vice President Kamlesh Raman and the social media advisor Kuldeep Chaudhary joined the Ahmadmi party in the presence of Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia, Uttarakhand convener Jodh Singh Bisht again. Welcoming them into the party fall, Sisodia said their entry will strengthen up in Uttarakhand. The leader said they quit the Congress as in fighting in the party was increasing despite the party's rout in the state assembly polls. The Uttar Pradesh police on Tuesday formed a special investigation team or to probe cases against fact-checker, Alt News co-founder Mohammad Zubair. The development comes on the day the Supreme Court on Tuesday extended the interim bail to the fact-checker in a case registered in Sitapur in UP. The relief, however, is restricted to the Sitapur case and the proceedings against Zubair, co-founder of fact-checking web news, Alt News, in Delhi and Lakhimpur will remain unaffected. This means he will still be in jail. Zubair has police cases registered against him across the state in Sitapur, Lakhimpur, Hatras and Muzaffarnagar. Reacting publicly for the first time after his private house was set on fire by the anti-government protesters on Saturday, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe on Monday said only people with a Hitler-like mindset torch buildings. In a special televised statement, Vikram Singhe said he accepted the post of Prime Minister as the economy was in disarray. He said the International Monetary Fund has noted that around four years would be required to stabilize the economy. The first year is the worst. This cannot be done in one or two days. At least a year would be needed to take the first corrective steps. The IMF said it would take four years. A group of irate protesters on Saturday night entered Vikram Singhe's private residence at Cambridge Place and set it on fire, inflicting extensive damage to the property. The incident came as after Vikram Singhe offered to resign to make way for an all-party government. Ukraine warned on Monday that Russian forces were preparing to intensify the fight for key cities in the Donbass, as President Volodymyr Zelensky bitterly accused Canada of undermining sanctions against Moscow. In eastern Ukraine, the focal point or for a grinding Russian offensive, the death toll from a weakened shelling of an apartment building in the town of Chasivyar in the Donetsk region rose to 33. Dozens of rescuers could be seen working amid the ruins of the partially destroyed buildings, Monday aided by a mechanical digger. With prayers, flowers and flags draped in black ribbons, Japan on Tuesday with prayers flowers and flags draped in black ribbons. Japan on Tuesday said farewell to Shinzo Abe, a polarizing figure who dominated politics as the country's longest-serving premier before being gunned down at a campaign rally last week. Crowds packed, pavements lined with a heavy police presence as the 
Kase Karing Abe, who died at age 67, departed from a central Tokyo temple on a procession through the city. With nearly a dozen helicopters circling overhead, people bowed deeply their hands in prayer as the hearsay passed in a procession carried life. The funeral procession passed through the capital's political heart of Nagatacho, where hundreds had lined up in front of the parliament building. Abe first entered as a young lawmaker in 1993 after the death of his politician father. Italy will soon start administering a second COVID-19 booster shot to people aged over 60. Health Minister Roberto Speranza said this comes after the European Union health agencies recommended the second booster dose for vulnerable people and those over 60. They said all scientific evidence shows that an extra booster dose can greatly protect people, especially the frail and the elderly, from hospitalizations. Thank you for watching Unplug TV India. If you like the video, please hit like, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned to get the latest updates.